In this video, we're going to cover the top seven ways to SEO optimize your restaurant to show up at the top of Google without having to spend money in ads. I recently was reminded of the power of SEO when Mo, the owner of Talk and Tacos in Miramar, Florida, shared with me the results he'd seen in his restaurant. When I first met Mo back in 2021, he had just expanded his food truck to his first brick and mortar location. His restaurant was pretty busy right away, which he was really excited about, but he had a serious problem. That problem was that almost all of his customers were coming from DoorDash and Uber Eats. You probably know why that was a problem, right? Because they were taking 30% from him on every order. Profit margins in the restaurant business averaged just 5%. So it's not sustainable to be paying 30% on each order. Worse than taking 30%, they weren't sharing the customer's names with him. So they weren't really even his customers. Mo told me that to survive in the long run, that he needed a more sustainable and profitable way to actually get new customers. So what he did was he started doing SEO and executing the tips that I'm going to share with you in this video. Now, just two years later, the results he sees are bananas. In the past 30 days, he has had 516 new customers come from Google alone. Those customers represent over 27,000 $509 in sales for him, which he can measure down to the penny through his website and online ordering systems. Just in the past 30 days, those are the results he's seen. Imagine how much those new customers spend over the course of a year. The reason I know his numbers is because Mo has been using our platform at owner.com to power his website, do his SEO, and measure his marketing. But don't worry. All of the tips I'm going to share with you in this video work no matter what website builder you're using, whether it's Wix or Squarespace or Owner. They're easy to implement and you don't have to be a tech geek like me in order to set them up. Now, you might be thinking, there's so many different ways to market a restaurant from social media to community to SEO. Is SEO really worth focusing on in this wide set of options? In studying thousands of restaurants marketing over the past five years, I think the answer is yes, that SEO is almost always worth investing in. The reason is that it has three really important things going for it in marketing a restaurant that platforms like social media just don't. The first thing is that people are ready to buy. When somebody searches Google for a broad restaurant term like best tacos in Miramar, Florida, they're ready in that moment to make a buying decision. They've already decided that they want to get food from a restaurant and the type of restaurant they wanna get food from because they're searching for tacos in Miramar, Florida in that example. So now it's just a matter of what restaurant they select. If we compare this to what somebody is doing when they're on Facebook, they generally aren't ready to buy from a restaurant. And that's because they're actually there to engage with their friends and family. So it's much harder to drive sales from impressions you get on social media versus SEO for that first reason. Which brings us to reason number two. Restaurants are the most searched for local business type in the entire world. This blew me away when I saw that in every American city with a population of over 10,000, there's at least a thousand people per month in that city that are searching Google for restaurants near them. And like we just discussed, these people are particularly valuable because they're looking for a restaurant in that moment. So if we can rank at the top, not only do we get the people that are hungry, ready to order from restaurants, but there are thousands of them every month in every city that we get exposure to for ranking at the top. So beyond just being ready to buy and having thousands of people every month in almost every American city searching for restaurants on Google, the third reason is that most restaurants today are doing SEO wrong, which means that if you're able to do it right, if you get the practices that we cover in this video right away unlocked in your restaurant, then you will unlock that steady flow of new customers. There's so many people who don't know what they're doing that run marketing agencies or promise to do SEO for restaurants, but then don't drive results or they report annoying results like, oh, you'll get 100 clicks or 500 impressions and it doesn't move the needle for the restaurant. So one of the things we're going to cover in this video is in addition to the most important things to do to SEO optimize your restaurant, how you can actually measure the results it's driving down to the dollar 
So without further ado, let's dive right in to the seven best strategies to SEO optimize your restaurant based on the work that I've seen over the past five years in doing this with thousands of restaurants. Strategy number one is to figure out what phrases would be most valuable to rank for. The beginning of optimizing a restaurant for Google is figuring out what keywords would somebody be likely to type into Google that would be valuable for my restaurant type to rank for? In the SEO world, this is called keyword research. A keyword is the phrase that gets typed into Google for a Google search, like best tacos in Miramar, Florida. There's two types of keywords that we need to plan for, our primary keyword and our secondary keyword. Our primary keyword is the type of restaurant that we are and the city we're in. For example, I recently helped Antoinette, the owner of Otavio's Italian restaurant with SEO. Her primary keyword is Italian restaurant in Lakeside. So her goal going in was making sure she came up when people searched for Italian restaurant in Lakeside, California. Then it's really important to nail the secondary keyword, which is our most popular common dish so that we can rank for both the primary and the secondary. Otavio's Italian restaurant's most popular common dish is pasta. So the owner Antoinette also wanted to make sure that when people were searching for pasta in Lakeside, California, when they were craving specific types of her common dishes that she showed up first. You can use free tools online like Google's Keyword Planner tool or various others to figure out what keywords are most important for your restaurant type and city. But to make life a bit easier for you, I've done keyword research on all of the most common restaurant types and the best primary and secondary keywords to optimize for on each type. So I'll put them on screen for you right now and you can use these keywords for your restaurant if it is Italian, Indian, Chinese, Japanese, Thai, Mexican, pokey, pizzerias, and wings. If you have a different restaurant type than any of the ones that are on screen and want us to do this keyword research for you, you can comment your restaurant name down below and we'll give you the top keywords to optimize for in a reply back completely for free. So once we've got the best primary and secondary keywords figured out, it's time to put them in action and to place them in the meta title and the H1 tag of the website. That may sound like gibberish, and I promise it doesn't require technical expertise to do. In 2023, it's actually super easy to do, even if you're not a coder. Let me explain in plain English. The H1 tag is basically the first big text on your page. While your meta title is like the headline blue text that you tell Google to use when people are searching. It's like the, the headline for your website, the first result that comes up in blue on Google. Once you've got that figured out, there's another great trick you can use to boost your SEO. That is strategy number two, setting the alt text on your images strategically. The alt text is the text description of any image that Google uses to figure out what is actually in that picture. So it's super easy to set in any website builder. This not only helps your restaurant show up for your primary and secondary keywords because it tells Google a bit more context on what type of restaurant you are, but it also makes it so that when somebody searches for your food type in your area on Google images that your pictures come up and that can lead to people then clicking from those pictures into your website and visiting your website. There's a nice related bonus to that, which is that setting alt text helps with achieving American disability Act compliance, which Google also factors in to rankings. So how do you set alt text? In your website builder and online ordering system, adjust the alt text on all of your menu item pictures to be best, name of the dish, plus city you're in. For example, with the Otavio's example, one of her most popular dishes is called the garlic bread on the menu. So we'd say best garlic bread in Lakeside, California on the image of the garlic bread in alt text. If we go back to the example that we started this video with of talking Tacos, a huge portion of their 516 new customers monthly are actually coming from Google Images, interestingly enough. When we search for tacos in Miramar, Florida, which over 500 people per month do, you'll notice that six of the nine top images that come up within the Google Images tab are talking tacos, delicious tacos. Six of the top nine images are their pictures. And as we know in restaurants, people eat with their eyes. So there's huge advantages to having your images ranked 
at the top as well as your web pages. Google will also often pull those images in to search results to enrich them, which again gives you another opportunity to get those website visitors. Which brings us to another genius strategy, which Talk and Tacos has actually leveraged really well. Strategy number three of this video, creating dedicated pages with reviews for your most popular menu items. Because sometimes people are going to be searching for a specific dish that they're craving. So if we can rank at the top using great pages that detail our most popular menu items, it can be an amazing source of new customers who want exactly what we offer. For example, according to KW Finder, over 500 people per month are searching for birria tacos in Miramar, Florida, like I described. So what we did with Talk and Tacos was we created a dedicated page on their website for their birria tacos. This page is connected to their online ordering and has a picture of the dish, a short menu description, as well as 20 reviews that mention birria tacos. Then what's really genius is that this page is connected to their online ordering. So people can order the dish with Apple Pay in less than a minute then and there if they're craving that specific dish. So we make it extremely easy for the customer to not only find the restaurant, but to place an order, which does help with SEO for a reason reason we'll cover later. They do this automatically using the platform that we've built at owner.com. But like I said at the top of this video, you can absolutely do this with any website builder featuring similar content. Very, very, very few restaurants do this. So when your restaurant does, there's almost no competition showing up at the top of Google for these specific dishes, which many dishes, including tacos, guacamole, and various other specific types of tacos in the Mexican restaurant example, have tons of search volume behind them as the most popular cuisine dishes. By the way, if you found this video helpful so far, make sure to click the subscribe button down below so that you never miss out on videos where I share the most important restaurant marketing strategies working today and the real results that restaurants that have used them have achieved. So with that plug to subscribe out of the way, let's get into tip number four, making every page connect with where guests are. I don't mean physically where guests are, I mean in their buying process online. What I mean by that is that the better we can connect with where customers are in their buying journey, psychologically, how they're actually making the decision about whether to order from a restaurant or whether to order from your restaurant, the better we can connect with that, the longer people will spend on that website, which is a major ranking factor in Google's eyes that helps achieve better results. And not only helps with rankings, but also helps with getting more people to buy. It might be obvious, but this is important to get right across the entire restaurant website and especially the homepage. What does right look like though, Adam? I'm glad you asked. It's helpful to put yourself in the guest's shoes. When I'm searching for best tacos in Miramar, where am I in my journey as a customer? Well, I've decided I want tacos and I want them in Miramar. Now the question is, which restaurant will I order from that's shown up? Fortunately, we've run thousands of tests with this, with thousands of restaurants, and have found that there are three major factors in restaurant buying decisions. The first is online reviews. According to studies, 70% of people placing online orders reference online reviews to determine whether to order from a restaurant and what to order. So it's important to put those reviews on your homepage and throughout your online ordering experience when people are actually making decisions on what to order. Otherwise, what happens is people go to that review site that no restaurant owner likes, Yelp, and they use that for their review reference. And we all know how unfair and ridiculous people can be on third-party review sites. So what I've seen work is taking control of your destiny and featuring a lot of reviews on the homepage of your website and on specific menus menu items, using a slider or just putting in screenshots of the reviews, then putting dish specific reviews on the online ordering items through the online ordering experience so that people never have to leave the website to go to Yelp or Google after they find the restaurant. The second most important buying factor, which is important to cover on a website to get it to rank high is the restaurant story. People love a good restaurant founding story of how that restaurant came to be in their community, what makes the restaurant different and special and who the owner is, because they love buying from people in their community rather than large corporations. In the case of Otavio's, the Italian restaurant I mentioned, their website begins by saying, our family's recipes 
from Italy brought to Lakeside. Super simple phrase that gives people a sense of the restaurant's story and differentiation. These are Italians from Italy running this authentic Italian restaurant. People love supporting people in their community, as we've described earlier. It makes a huge difference we've seen in conversion behavior. So covering that story on the homepage and then reiterating it throughout the website, whatever your restaurant founding story is, can make a huge impact. Which brings us to three, the most popular dishes on the menu. People always want to know what is popular on the menu to make their buying decision easier. That's why it's so important to showcase our most popular dishes directly on the homepage and in the ordering experience. If we look back at Otavio's, we'll notice that the section immediately after telling their story has you guessed it, mouthwatering pictures of their most popular dishes. Then immediately after that, it showcases reviews. So story, then dishes, and then reviews. Perfect conversion formula for a restaurant's homepage. Their restaurant's homepage, by the way, is converting at over five times the average restaurant rate. If we can create websites that address those three most important major factors, then people will spend longer on our websites and are significantly more likely to convert which is important to Google. Because when Google sees people spending a while and placing lots of orders on a website, it's a sign to them that it's a high quality restaurant, that it nicely matches what people are looking for. So they give it extra exposure in future searches. Speaking of people spending a long time on websites and the importance of giving people a great digital experience, there's another major factor that we can cover to further improve our guest experience online and SEO rankings along the way, because as we've covered, the two are pretty interconnected. Which brings us to strategy number five, page speed optimization. There are few experiences online that are more frustrating than websites that are taking forever to load, especially when you're hungry and trying to get food. But it's not just websites that take forever that are problematic. According to a study by HubSpot, one of the top marketing platforms across the entire internet, 70% of people when surveyed said that the page speed could make or break whether they order online. Not only that, but for every one second, just one second in page speed that the website took to load, they found that it produced 5% fewer people for every second converting into customers. That means that if your website takes even just three seconds to load, you're losing 15% of new customers. Because page speed is so important, it not only affects whether people who make it to that website will actually buy, it also affects how many people Google sends to that website. If you wanna know how your current website stacks up, there's many online tools you can use for that, but we built one specifically for rest restaurants that you can use for free at compare.owner.com. That's compare.owner.com. It scans your restaurant online over the course of about a minute, checking not only your website pages feed, but all of your SEO factors, your reviews, and various other pieces of your website, and then shares a free report on how your page speed is doing and how your SEO is doing in general and how it compares to restaurants in your area. Like I said, there's other free tools online you can use, like GT Metrics is a great one or pagespeed.web. Dev, but if you want to use one specifically for restaurants, we built one for free that you can use at compare.owner.com. Based on those reports, then you can do a number of things that I've seen work really well to increase page speed. These tend to be the top things to make your website faster. One, compressing images and re-uploading them. Lots of online tools to do that that you can Google around and find. Two, simplifying code. This one is a bit more technical, of course, but if you show your website guy a report on page speed that calls this out and calls out the specific items to optimize, they'll be able to simplify the code in order to make it load faster. Three, ensuring your web hosting is served with best practices. It's easy to migrate over to another host if yours is not fast. And I will call out that our platform at owner.com does this automatically with websites built using our platform consistently ranking in the top 1% of restaurant websites in terms of page speed and usability. But you don't need our platform to get this factor right. There's quite a few that are fast. Wix is fast, Squarespace is fast, Webflow is fast. There's a number of other really strong ones. So we've now covered the five most important strategies to use on a restaurant website to make it rank better on Google. Those strategies, by the way, are called the on-site optimization factors. But it turns out that there's two more important things to do on SEO, but off the website, which brings us to strategy number six, getting your naps right. 
Not the midday siesta. <laughs> Nobody in the restaurant world has time for that. But the SEO NAVs, which stands for name, address, and phone number. Making sure that these are consistent across the top seven directories can provide a major boost. Not only does it give you more links back to your website, but it counts as what Google calls a citation, which is an occurrence of your business on another website. It's kind of like a popularity contest where Google sees which businesses are most mentioned by other relevant businesses across the entire internet. And every time your restaurant's name, address, phone number, and website show up on another website, you get another vote in that popularity contest, which helps Google rank you higher because it signals to them that, hey, this restaurant is being mentioned a lot by other relevant sites on the internet. The key here though is consistency. Every character of the restaurant name, address, phone number, and website across the top seven directories has to be exactly the same, down to the character. Those directories, by the way, are TripAdvisor, Better Business Bureau, Yellow Pages, Google, and Yelp. That brings us to the last tip. Tip number seven, tracking your progress to see what's working. A lot of people know that you can use Google's free search console tool to monitor how many clicks you're getting from Google each month. But a common frustration I hear from restaurant owners all the time is that they don't care how many clicks they got. They don't care how many impressions or likes they got online. The real question is how many new customers is it driving? How much in sales is it driving? Without those questions being answered, it's not very useful data. There's only one tool that I know of that can make this measurable, down to which customers came from which source, and how much each source online actually contributed to a restaurant sales. The reason I know of it is because I wanted it so badly that our company built it. After experiencing that frustration so many times, it's one of the tools available on our platform at owner.com so that you can see exactly not only where customers found you online, so it actually checks where the traffic originated from the new customers you get, to tell you how many came from Yelp or how many came from Google. But it also tells you how much in sales each source drives you. That's how I knew exactly how much money in SEO driven sales Talk and Tacos had made. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video on SEO for restaurants. Feel free to comment any questions or thoughts below and I'll get back to you personally with more context if you've got any questions or concerns. And like I mentioned earlier, if you want a free report on the SEO of your restaurant, just comment your restaurant name down below and I'll have our team take a look, run some tests, scan your website, and share some tips with you. If you learned something helpful on this video, make sure to click that subscribe button to make sure that you never miss out on the latest restaurant marketing strategies and tips that I post about a few times a month. As you might be able to tell, I'm a complete nerd when it comes to restaurant marketing and absolutely obsessed with this, so I'm constantly uncovering helpful new ways that restaurants can grow their sales and acquire new customers. Hope you have a great rest of your day and hope to see you around this channel if you found it useful. Bye.